Hi. Oh. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard Everett on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joey at J Wonderl on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. And uh, today we are working on our Shmup Grades game. Um, I'm going to apologize right now for being absent minded or kind of out of it today. Um, because I, like, for the past week, I've just been having the worst sleep. And I think that combined with daylight savings has just made a real perfect storm today. So it's also a Monday. Yeah, that's true. And like Garfield, I hate them. And also, I'm always putting normal into boxes and shipping in places. Mm. All right. So um, where did we leave off last time? Well, we had started coding some new enemies. So um, we got our little cactus guy. When we go up here, we can see these, these cute little mice running backwards now uh, we should fix that um and they uh they come down and just kind of zigzag around and they work in different directions so there you go we just automatically detect which direction they should be coming from and today we're going to be doing some more enemies and also we're going to fix the mice so that they're facing the right direction so let's do that first i guess um so let's go to where we create our little rat guys here we go and this is a real easy fix because we have the character animations extension. We're just going to go ahead and do loop frames. We're not going to actually animate this guy, but we are going to flip the image. So do 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 just a single frame. 12 by 9. Paste that right there. Change this to facing right. Duplicate. Facing left. And then Did I m mess that up? You got to change my sprite to 10 bit of me. I think. You're right. That's it. Oh, gosh. I'm glad that's not a quarterable offense. <laughs> there they go. Now, 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 now they're running right. Nice. Yeah, good enough. OK. <clears throat> so uh, that's nifty. Um, let's go ahead and do a new enemy type. So, um, oh, I guess we should handle the end for these guys. Um, so they just run for a bit, and then we're kind of just going to decide, like, what are they going to do next? Um, or if they, we have two scenarios that we kind of have to deal with. One is where they run into a wall, and then one is where they um, uh, just reach the end of their path, like, naturally. So like, here's an example of one that could totally run into a wall. And in fact, if we take this and let's just up it to eight times. Then, oh, wait, that was the wrong one to up eight times. I do like this, though. All right, this one I want to make eight times. OK. It's like they're yeah, like coming out of the ground. Yeah, we're we're gonna do a little animation, I think, to to make that clear. But now they're gonna run over here, and you see it's all going weird because they were running into the ground. Um, so we gotta fix that. Um, what are we gonna do? Well, uh, let's just detect when that happens, and then when it happens, we will just destroy them instead. So we'll just mark that as even path. So um, basically, we're doing this zigzag, right? And then um, we change whenever we hit a wall. So that's all fine. The only case where it matters is um, when we are moving um, on the perpendicular axis. So we go like you know to the side for however many tiles. Then we move down one tile, move to the other side, down one tile. So that down one tile step, that's the one where we have to detect if we're going into a wall. So um, right here is where we do that movement. So here's where we're moving. You know, depending on which direction we're moving, we we move in one of the directions. And um, here we just want to say, is this location a wall? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm somewhat distracted out of the corner of my eye. There are window washers 
at my building today, <laughs> and they have um, chosen my patio as the like Staging place where gear. they're putting all of their gear and stuff. Oh wow! Um, and well, anyway, right now he's squeezing the, the door and looking That's in on my very messy apartment. All right. So, if it is a wall, then we want to end our path. So we're just going to call. Break. Oh, we have a lot of stuff. Send a chat when you're online so I can reload. I, we didn't do that, so oops. Welcome to Teams. We make cats boxing ham palace. Question mark. I believe what they are saying is we make them a Buckingham Palace out of boxes. Gotcha. Oh. Interesting. They're shaking too. What? Inconsistency. Oh, you said mice when you first said rat. Uh, they're. they're Mice are radish. They are radish. Um, is that a quarter? It should be make any offense quarter bowl. I'm adding memes to my economic extension, adding to the math plus. Opinions on people saying JavaScript when referring to make code static TypeScript. Eh, what a, we call it JavaScript too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it, JavaScript. it is JavaScript. It's just got a different library and uh, we run it differently. It's JavaScript syntax. We use the TypeScript AST. Yep. Okay. Um, cool. And I realize now we just have to copy this whole check. Um, oh, come on. Ah, right, come on. Get over here. But we're going to invert it. So we're going to see if it is. Um, we have to invert it using good old De Morgan's law. I always feel proud of myself when I remember De Morgan's law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would definitely not have remembered the name for that. Yeah. De Morgan's law is um, when you have something that's anded, so say like A and B, um, you you can like negate it by making it not A or not B. Or wait, no, it's the same. It's equivalent. Wait, what? It's the... Doesn't, whatever. Yeah. De Morgan's law. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, when you take a multiplier and distribute it into the different terms of a parenthetical section of an equation, but you're doing it with logical operators. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, the point is I knew what, I knew the word. All right. And I'm using <laughs> it correctly, even if I can't define it now. What are you, my discrete math teacher? All right. Um, okay. So if that happens, then we're going to break and we're going to end it. So um, how are we going to end it? Well, we want to make these guys just kind of burrow in and out of the ground, I think. Um, so we're going to make just a little animation now. Um, it's going to be like. Why? Well, yeah, see, I'm so tired. I'm just like animation. Look for green. And uh, not being successful. All right, so uh, we're going to do this as 16 by 16 because that's how big our thing is. And we basically just want this to be like a. Um, like imagine a hole. Where they're disappearing into and maybe the best way to do this is to not do. An animation, maybe we should just use that. Let's let's use that effects extensions from the forum. Uh, Joey, do you remember who made that? Not really. No. I think it was Sylvan Circle. Extra effects extension by Sylvan Circle. I am a genius. Okay. So, um, uh. The extra effects extension is really, it, it's good for doing these kind of nifty little things right here, which I think is what we want. We want to basically make these little things puffing up in an area, right? This extension, this is cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, never actually used it before, though. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick. By the way, every single time I see this person's GitHub username, I think Alex Straza, because I'm a nerd. Um, Not that I've ever played World of Warcraft. All right. 
um it took so me a second to remember where i'd heard that before alex Straza. Yeah. yeah it's like a dragon i think dragon dragon yeah. person thing. yeah yeah, yeah. From Hearthstone, I, I think right? all the I think right, right, yeah, right, I do yeah. know it from Hearthstone. I think all the dragons in World of Warcraft are also people. Attracts. Yes. <laughs> it's a ah. common thing to have human forms. Sure. For dragons and things. If you want to be lame, okay. Um, I'll go ahead and grab this. Yes, I'm throwing down the gauntlet for uh, fantasy authors. I like my dragons to be giant, unknowable creatures. They can be smart and stuff, but, like, don't make them humans. That's lame. Dragons are cool because they're not humans. They're giant. I mean, I'm kind of with you. Okay, so we're going to be creating an effect. um, And it looks like we start these. Oh, cool. We can start it at a location for however many milliseconds. So this is perfect. Um, so we're going to want to create in our own effect, probably, but let's see what we've got here. So fire, toxic, electric, poison, smoke. Yeah, toxic and poison. So differentiating in the Pokemon games between the regular poison and the poison inflicted by toxic, of course. Um, all right. So um, let's see. It looks like we take in an array of colors. Um, we have sizes. We can do um, X respond VX, X respond VY. I'm guessing that is affecting the velocity when they start. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have some spread, over time spread, particle duration, decelerate after duration. OK, lots of stuff we can do here. So let's go ahead and um, make a function. We're going to call this uh, make burrow effect. This is going to take in an X. It's going to take in a Y. It's going to take in a duration. And there we go. All right. So um, we're going to go ahead and call this so we can actually see our code running. We're going to want to run this burrow effect both when we spawn rats and when we despawn rats, because they're going to come out of the ground and then go back into the ground. So right now, if you see them go up here, you can actually see them like just popping into existence, which we don't want to do. So um, heading over to our place where we create them. Let's see, I know we have a spawn rat somewhere. Here, I'm just going to do a Daryl. Grab spawn rat enemy, grab make burrow effect. There we go. OK. So um, when we create this guy right here, we're going to go ahead and call our make burrow effect. And luckily, we are already passing in our x, y. So that's nifty. And um, for the duration here, I'm just going to put in, let's see, how long are we pausing in between these guys? 100 milliseconds, looks like. So we'll do it for 100. Should be fine. All right. And now we're going to go ahead and create our own effect. So set my effect to oop, that over there. We're going to make our colors. We want these to be like dirt. So we're going to do like that one, that one, and that one. But I want it to be primarily brown, I guess. I wonder if I put in brown twice if it'll weight it. Well, we'll try this for now, and then we can um, mess around with it. Um, sizes to array of spark, sure, why not? Um, initial spread, over time spread, duration, looks good. Now we're going to go ahead and call this. Oh, I guess let me put it. You want to change the duration. Yeah. So um, we're going to put it between. Duration divided by two and duration. So I believe this is the duration of individual particles. So we'll do it that way. I don't know. We might end up making this like be between duration divided by four and duration divided by two. You know, like I don't know if we want them all to last for the entire duration of the effect. Um, but we'll do this for now. And now we're going to go ahead and call uh, start effect. We're going to pass in our X, Y. Go ahead and pass in our effect also. 
and passing the duration. And I don't know, let's see what happens. I've never actually used this in Scissor before. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Okay, that was... um. <laughs> Oh, OK. Yeah, all right. Um, OK. Initial spread between 50 and 100%. Initial spread between, let's put this at 1 and 5%. Mm -hmm. And then over time spread, we will put between 5 and 10%. I don't know. And. Uh, we're going to put this between 200 and 400. I think it's fine if it goes longer than the effect. <laughs> um, well, all right, I made an error. I think I saw what caused the error. We good now? Nope. There we go. Okay. Uh, this is a Blockly bug. When I dragged this out, I saw one of the blocks disappear, which usually means that it didn't actually disappear. It got connected somewhere. So, um, all right, we're going to go ahead and pull these out, like I said, and change this back. So, we're going to make this between one and five, and five and 10. I don't actually know what these are doing, but I'm guessing that's why they were so spread out. So, I go up there, and that is much more what we're looking for. All right, yeah. we're going to go ahead and change this one to be white because the tan is just blending in too much. And we're going to up this to be 10 and 15. And head on up and there we go. OK. I don't know, maybe maybe we need some more spread. Yeah. So let's uh, let's let's take the uh, this one and just make it way bigger. We'll make it 50 and 60. I don't know. See what happens. I don't, I don't actually know what these percentages are referring to. No. I think we we answered that one at, like two weeks ago. It, it, it was. Uh... Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. I remember talking about that one. What? That's invalid project. Is that what we're talking about? No, uh, how, how to make, make a, a toggle yes, yes no. no. Just uh, ask that sort of question on the forms. It's easier to find. Yeah, it later if you're if you're asking again. us for to do block definition stuff, unless I'm working on JavaScript, I can't really write you an example. So just ask it on the forum, and uh, you know we'll give you advice. There should be a block available in blocks for a gray block. Um, I think we vaguely thought about that before. It's just it would be way too confusing. I would say just like for one, you'd have to match up the generated variable names from uh, blocks into JavaScript and all that sort of stuff. Because uh, sometimes they can be a little bit different. We have different rules allowing you to write names uh, for variables in blocks versus JavaScript. All right. OK, cool. This is looking good. I like it. Um, so we need to make it when they disappear now. Um, and the way we're going to do that, by the way, I don't actually understand why these guys are like getting out of sync with each other, you know? Yeah, it seems like there's the like one in front going a little faster or something. It is kind of cute that it's the one in front. It's like the leader and then all the followers are behind because they have to take a second to. It is it's the one turns. in front. That, like all the other ones are doing yeah. fine. It's just the one in front, huh? Just going a little bit faster. It seems like it just gains ground on the turn somehow. I don't know how. Oh, OK, well, all right. <laughs> Let's look at the code and see if we can figure it out. So um, when what we're doing is uh, we have this temp number. We're setting it to 0. And then we're doing all this looping stuff. And every time we add a location, we're changing our temp number by one. And then down here at the bottom, we animate temp enemy my path, and we do temp number times 200 milliseconds for each time. Um, so we are correctly putting temp number to zero. And we are correctly resetting our tile map location to be the location of our temp enemy, which we are positioning on XY. 
So I don't really see how I can change. I mean, there could be an error in my extension, but that doesn't seem right. Um, it's never happened before. It, yeah. <laughs> I feel like this wasn't happening earlier. Change. Uh, it might, we might have just noticed it because we're making more now. Or maybe. Change it back to four. See if we notice it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea what's happening. Yeah. All right. Well, that's fine. Um. So, uh, finally, we want to destroy these guys. Um. So we're gonna go ahead and make a. That's um a mouthful. Um. Destroy after time with effect. It's gonna take in a number, which is gonna be. All right, wait, first we should take the sprite. All right, take the sprite. And take in our number. It's going to be a duration. Um, oh, and then we'll take in another number, which is going to be lifetime. OK. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, call this on our rat enemies. So let's go ahead and call that right here. Pass in our temp enemy. Very important we do this before the pause. Um, and then for duration, we're going to put in the same thing we passed to the burrow factor, which was 100. And for the lifetime, we're going to pass in the same thing as this animation duration. And then in here, we're going to go ahead and use timer again. We're going to do after however many milliseconds do. Um, pass in our lifetime. Then we're going to destroy. Well, uh, first we're going to check to see if our enemy already got destroyed. Really, that's probably a good idea. And so just in case the player destroyed them in the meantime. But if our sprite is not destroyed, then we're going to go ahead and destroy them. And we're going to call our make burrow effect and pass in their X, their Y, and whatever the duration is. All right, now they should burrow away. Oh, except I made it long enough that now they go off screen. All right, well, we'll go over here to these ones, which will not have that problem. No, no, they do have that problem. Oh, man. How am I going to see? Oh, they, they, OK, there we go. Yeah, yeah, we got them. Cool. That's perfect. Uh, all right, cool. Thank you, Sylvan Circle, for a cool extension. <laughs> all right, well, let's do another enemy. So I drew this guy. Um, so uh, I already made a tile for this, um, which I called this guy Bun. Um, I believe he is some type of jackrabbit, a black tailed jackrabbit. That's what it was. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do tile triggers right here. We are going to be doing the exact same thing as our uh, rat enemy, except we're going to change this to be Bun. And uh, we're going to call a different function instead. Let's go ahead and do spawn jackrabbit. And we're going to pass in an x, going to pass in a y. And then what is this third argument I have up here? Remainder of. Oh, this is the camera direction is what I'm passing in. OK, yeah, we'll pass that in too. Why not? I know. I think it's. I think we called it movement direction. It's actually the opposite of the camera direction. All right. Okay.
All right, what should these guys do? I think we need to make these guys actually fire projectiles. Oh. You know how jackrabbits are. Yeah. All right, Sora Lawrenson has said uh, jackrabbit, the ride at Kennywood, Pittsburgh reference. Yeah, okay, for the last time, none of us are from Pittsburgh, all right? So they're just going way over our heads, but I do appreciate you calling them out. <laughs> um, <laughs> guessing Kennywood is a theme park? Hmm? I grew up with Bush Gardens, of course. Thomas, I'm guessing you did too. Bushy Park. Bushy Park. Bushy park. Really? Yeah, it's closer. I mean, I lived in Maryland for most of my life, so. I guess. Bush, Bush Gardens park is better than Hershey Park, Park, though, from what I know. I've never, I've never been to Bush Gardens. I've never been to Hershey Park, but I mean, come on. I have a, a soft spot for Hershey Park. Okay, but, you know, right in, the, in the Ireland part of Bush Gardens, they dye the, the river green. Oh, I will be going to Bush Gardens in May. Yeah. Wait, you're going to Bush Gardens in May? Yeah, I'm doing a road trip. I'm going to like four different amusement parks in a big old circle. Oh, fun. okay. It's yeah. fine. It's weirdly <laughs> fake Europe. So, so the whole thing with Bush Gardens in Virginia is fake Europe, right? Oh, okay. So it has um, like an Ireland part. There's an Italy part. There's a, um, is there a French part? It's Germany. There's like Scandin. There is Germany. Yes like scandinavia or something i don't remember um but sure, they all problematic at all oh yeah no of course not um, <laughs> but uh so it's got like lots of um you know just really big caricatures of those places you know like everyone in the german one is wearing later hosen you get the idea of course yeah i mean it sounds kind of sounds like an experience <laughs> <laughs> that it is all right at Hershey Park, everything's just candy. That's fine. But they didn't commit to the theme that well. So it's I think they could have done more, you know. Bush Gardens is very pretty though. They 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 uh they win awards every year for being like the prettiest theme park because they go in and like huh. they they have very well manicured gardens, as the name implies. Anyway. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and spawn an enemy. Let's go ahead and grab that guy I drew. Where are you? There you go. Grab it, buddy. And uh, let's grab our spawn rat enemy because I have a feeling I'm going to copy some code from there. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to spawn one of these guys. We are, however, going to do a burrow effect. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and uh, we're going to do this as well. We will make it so that they flip direction depending on what moving they move, what direction they're moving. So let's copy this back. Remember, 11 by 13. 11 by 13. Go. All right, bun. Okay, and I think um, how do how do bunnies move? Yeah. Boing, 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 boing. yeah. So we're gonna make these guys hop. Um, so I think what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna again be using our um, path extension, and we want to make these guys um just kind of bounce around so what is that how do we do that joey what how how joey how um should we make their actual sprite like a, a shadow um we do a little parabolic jump and then uh, you take damage when you get landed on if you're in the shadow when it lands just I... ghosted otherwise oh i see That's interesting. So when they're in the air, it's just like they don't exist anymore, basically, just because otherwise I don't know how much effort we're going to have to put in to deal with walls and actually planning out a route for them. 
I'm wondering, are we going to have to do a lot of math to make that look realistic? No, I mean, it's probably fine. Okay. Okay. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's, it's just a parabola, right? Yeah, it's just a parabola. Okay. Um, so uh, we're going we're gonna to use our path extension for that. Let's just get them moving first, and then we'll do the shadow. I like the idea of the shadow, though, so hmm. keep that in mind. Uh, but I don't know if we're going to do the landing on you thing. We might just make yeah. it so that, you know, if you bump into them, you get hurt. And I think we're also going to have them fire at you, preferably carrots, but I'm not going <laughs> to. No, it's going to be carrots. They're going to fire carrots at you. All right. <laughs> I know they're jackrabbits and there are not carrots in the desert, but they're rabbits and rabbits eat carrots. OK. You're going to add a carrot projectile to your projectile system? I am. Thomas. All right. We can do it with triangles and a circle for the green part. It'll be fine. Yeah, that works. Yeah. All right. So um, we're going to go ahead now and uh, grab. Um, we want to do a parabolic thing. So the uh, quad curve is actually great for that. So um, this is a quadratic curve, and parabola is a quadratic function. Don't fact check me on that. I think. I think it is. Sounds right to me, but yeah. I don't. I don't know what the implications of saying something is a quadratic function are. All right. Um, so, how does a quadratic curve work? Um, so, you give it two points. One of them is the destination. That's the second point here. So, this is where we want them to go. And then one we give is a control point. So, the control point basically determines. Um, how the curve is set out. And actually, you know, it might be a quadratic curve um, SVG. I know I found a nice little thing a while ago that just gave you a little. OK, well, this is this is what we're looking for. So um, what you do is basically you put a control point somewhere and then it is going to make a quadratic curve that fits that control point for when you um, uh, start and where you end. Right, um, so you can use that to make a wide variety of things. If you put it in the middle, you get a nice hill shape like this, and that's what we're going to be doing. You can put this, you know, wherever you want, and that'll kind of skew it in different directions, um, but we're going to do it right in the middle. Um, and the quadratic curve is just a um, simplification of the cubic Bezier curve, which gives you a lot more options, but we're not going to be using those options. So we're just going to do a quadratic curve. Um, a cubic Bezier curve, you give two uh, options, uh, two control points. Um, and the first control point affects the like entry direction, and the second control point does like the exit direction, which makes it so you can do shapes more like this, where you have like, that you can do this with a Bezier curve, or you can do it with two quadratic curves. So anyway, we're just going to be doing quadratic curve. So um, let's do that. And um, we're going to just make this guy hop. So we're going to make this relative true. And what this does relative is it'll make it so that we move relative to our start position. So um, for this, I'm going to go ahead and just put in some values. We're going to set. We're going to say we're going to move 20 pixels for now. And we want our y to be the same because we are just hopping in the horizontal direction. And now we need a control point. We want it to be halfway between our um, 2x values. So we're going to put this in 10. And then we want this y to just be above. And remember, up is negative in Arcade. So I'm going to set this to be negative 30. I don't know. Just kind of picking a value for now. We'll see how it looks. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and hook this up. So we're going to um, do animate, pass in our temp enemy. And um, let's go ahead and actually put one of these guys in our game. So we're going to go over to our on start where we have our tile map. Open that up. Goodbye, rats. You've had your time. 
grab the bun. Stick a bun there. All right, let's go. What? Well, he's spawning. We can see that much. <laughs> All right, let's um, go back to our code first. So here we are. Okay, so we're doing quad curve with control 10 y negative 30 to x 20 y zero relative true. Now, I never actually tested the relative part of this extension, so it's possible that we should set this to be relative false and just put in the values that we want. Um, so to do that, we can do it with math. So I'm going to grab, um, I want this to be our temp enemy, or actually I can just grab the X up here. No, I'm going to want to copy and paste this, so I'll use the temp enemies location. So temp enemy X plus, and then we're going to do 10. And this is going to be temp enemy Y minus 30. And then we're going to do temp enemy X plus 20. And then this is just going to be temp enemy Y for where we're landing. What is happening? It's bizarre. Oh, right. OK, wait. Undo, 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 undo. I think this was actually probably working correctly. We are not setting the location of our thing. <laughs> that helps. Do it. So they were spawning somewhere far away. OK, well, do we have the code that one only must do? Do we have the code to what? Oh, I was wondering if we, it's fine. The answer is yes. I was wondering where the, if we had written the code that actually um, detects the tile and calls this function, but it's making the effect, so I assume it is. Yeah, I think so. Um, all right, I'm going to up this a ridiculous amount to five seconds. And. There he is, hey. there he's going. OK, <laughs> oh, I have relative false. Relative true, that's important. There he goes, look at him go. Sticks the landing, all right. <laughs> Um, so let's go ahead and make this more like half a second. Well, cool. All right. Let's keep doing it. OK. Um, so we want this guy to keep moving. Um, so we're just going to do this. This 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 is not how we're actually going to do it. I just want to see him moving. Um, so we're going to negate the X's on these last two. And we're going to change this to two seconds. Going to loop this on. Hop, 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 hop. All right, cool. We got a rabbit bounce. Um, OK, cool. So um, this is kind of how we're going to be doing the jumping. Um, we want to figure out what, what behavior do we want these guys to actually have. Um, so we're going to have them fire, but like, how, th how should they be moving around you? We're going to make them hop, but it should be like, you know, we have the zigzagging for the rats. So like, what should we do for these guys? Joey. My gut's kind of just like a random meandering with a tendency towards the player, but I don't really. It's a bias towards the player. Thing. Yeah. Random direction with a bias towards the player. 
Yeah. Or force the player use, with like, some random. So we want thing. them to move to the player. That would that'd be my uh, gut thought, just because it is like a, you know, a shmup. Like they tend to target the player at least a little bit. I feel like with any oh. sort of uh, hitting base one. But I guess you are saying carrots, not. Yeah, he's gonna fire based. carrots. Yeah, that's so, right. Uh, I, mean, I guess it's that, but maybe also um, probably shouldn't be constantly jumping, right? It should probably be like a spurt of one to four jumps in a row, maybe, is my yeah. gut feeling. Like, I, I feel like a rabbit's usually like, jump, 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 wait a, month, a while to make sure they're not going to get eaten, jump, jump, jump. So I think what we should actually do is, yeah, so we'll do some random hopping on like a horizontal plane, and we'll try to keep our distance. Okay, So yeah. After we move closer, when the next time he moves, he'll try and move backwards, you know, to get away from us. Yeah. Um, and so, all right, so we're going to be giving this guy some uh, AI, basically, some real simple AI. And so how we're going to do this is we're going to go ahead into Sprite Utils and grab a block I added, which is this one. So um, what does this guy do? Well, it lets you um, do an on-game update for a specific sprite. And you might be like, well, that seems useless. But it's actually useful for this because um, we're doing this inside of a function, but I'm defining this temp enemy thing. And we actually pass in this sprite right here. So I can drag this, and temp enemy can get reassigned, but I can, I can always use this little sprite thing. So that's nifty. Um, and uh, it, it also just lets us make our code neater because, you know, I can have this here and not have to put everything inside of the same on game update. So that's great. Um, so we're going to go ahead and grab this path stuff and put it in here. And um, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to have a little state that we're storing on this guy. Have I already added sprite data? I'm pretty sure I have. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go ahead and set uh, a um, state on this guy to start which is going to be um, OK, we're going to set this to state. And oh, I don't want this to be a number. If I was in JavaScript, it would be a number. But in blocks, I use strings. All right, so we're going to put our, basically what I'm imagining is we're going to hop, 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 fire three carrots. Hop, 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 fire three carrots. Hop, 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 fire three carrots, you know? Um, so let's go ahead and set this guy's state to init. This is just going to be like what we have for the beginning. Um, and uh, what we're going to do in here is we're going to say if grab any equals I think you want sprite in there, right? Not temp enemy. Oh, you're right. Yep. OK, if it equals init, then we're just going to, um, you know, maybe I should just put this as. Uh, fire first or hop first? Hmm? Do you want to fire first or hop first? I think I want to fire first. Yeah. Um, so what I'm thinking is, like, what's do I really need an init state? I mean, I think I probably don't. Yeah, I think you could just start with the firing state. Yeah, so we're just going to set this to firing. All right. And now we're going to need some numbers that we're going to store on this guy. So um, let's go in here and set a number. So we're going to set our temp enemy. And um, now's the part where I get frustrated by not having a block for this. 
I'm going to go outside. I'm going to make a share script. Go into JavaScript. Go to plus add custom.ts. Delete all this business. Go out here. Export function delta time. Return game dot current scene dot delta uh, got event context dot delta time millis and you know what because I'm cool I'm gonna go ahead and do two of them this one's gonna be delta time millis this one's gonna be delta time which is in seconds and now we're gonna do slash slash percent block ID equals Block custom delta force time go. Um, and then uh, delta force time go to. OK. Um, and now we're going to do slash slash percent weight equals zero and slash slash percent block equals delta time millis there we go share I'll turn this into a proper extension later. What's delta time? Uh, Soren Lawrence asks. Um, so delta time is the time each frame takes. So, uh, well, I guess specifically it's the time since the last frame. So it's nifty for doing stuff where you want to be able to time things because what I'm going to be doing here is by the way our blocks are now down here at the bottom hooray um what i'm going to be doing here is i want to um, have a timer on this guy and after however many milliseconds we're going to um be doing a well we're gonna have two timers i guess we're gonna have like a timer for a state transition and we're going to have a timer for the um uh how often we're firing right so we want to fire with a certain frequency and we have to do all this side of an on game update and uh, it's going to be a pain. Mm -hmm. um, so first thing I want to do is I want this on game update to run every frame. So right now it's every 500 milliseconds. Going to go ahead and change that to zero milliseconds. This will make it run every frame. And um, we're going to do uh, this is going to be um, timer. to number zero and we're going to go ahead in here and do whoop, fire rate fire count to number zero and yep there we go okay so if state equals firing then we're going to go into here and say if timer We want to do if timer equals. And um, this is going to be our fire rate. Um, so whatever number we put here is going to be how fast we fire. So I'm going to set this to be. I don't know. 100 milliseconds. We'll, we'll see how it goes, you know. So if our timer is number is greater than or equal to, and actually I like to do this inside of a while loop, not an if statement. So we're going to do this inside of a while loop. So while our timer is greater than or equal to zero, we're going to take our fire count and we're going to change it by negative one. So we're going to be counting this down to zero. When it goes to zero, we're going to change our state to moving and then we're going to do our little hops. 
and then we're going to change it back to firing. We're going to fire three times, so on and so forth. You get the idea. Um, and let's see. We'll get to this, I guess, next stream because we're kind of running out of time. Um, do I have a game to look at? Uh, looks like it to me. Can you just? Yeah, can't can't go late That's today time. because I have to go places and do things because I'm a mover and a shaker. Mm -hmm. Joey and Thomas know this about me. I move things and I shake them. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right, we're looking at our economics extension again. Let's go ahead and see what we have added. Um, so let's look at the box first. Uh, over, let's see. OK, looks like we now have a default number symbol, which is nifty. All right, and um, what does the default number symbol do? I'm guessing it changes the messages you get from stonks and stuff. I don't know. Let's go ahead and look at the Thing over here. So we have this default number sign. I'm going to go ahead and just do a control F. And it looks like it doesn't actually get used anywhere, but you can pull it out. So I guess it's something it's intended for you to use. So um, if you are making a game, you could set this inside of your on start. And then every time where you're converting to number, you can just pass that in instead of doing it for the thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say set, having this block is like a set default numbers symbol. I expect that to have an effect and not just be a variable, you know. But mm. eh, it's not a big deal. Mm. Um, let's see. Is there anything else new? Okay. Yeah, we got a bunch of number stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see. There's an annual plan. plan. Math plus. All right, go over to math plus. Does chorus number zero of here comes the sun have a do, 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 do? All right, well, we're going <laughs> to see. Um, so, uh, Joey, give me, a, give me a number. 73. OK, come on, Joey. <laughs> I want to know if it's uh, modded. No, give me give me an actual number so we can test it first. Four. All right. So we're going to go ahead in here and grab our does chorus number. We're going to put in four, and I'm going to go ahead and answer this. I am a big Beatles fan. It's true. Um, I handled exception right there. I'm going to say no, and I'm going to pass in four. Unhandled exception and exception. Um. Okay. How about how about <laughs> how about three? No. All right. Here's the part where we go look at the code. Okay. We also <laughs> have a nine plus ten block. Do the actual math to true. All right. Well, that's interesting. So if I, uh, I'm guessing I know what this is doing. Okay. Well. Okay. Wait. No. I guess I don't know what this is doing. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, so if I pass if I pass in the false thing, it gives 21. If I pass in true, it gives 19. It's a very useful block. Um, mm -hmm. Does number contain decimals? That's nifty. That's a useful one. Um, and pay fair with plan annual plan. Okay, I'll do that. You owe 54.99. All right, and if I do it with the monthly plan, guessing I owe less. You owe 499. Okay, 499 times 12. Wait, they're ripping me off. All right. Um, <laughs> wait, but actually, though. No, I, I, what is the annual plan? Okay, no, so you save $60 if you got it monthly. Every yeah, month. you're, you're right. So, you save $4 and change by going with the yearly yep. plan. It adds up. All right. So let's go ahead and look in here and say, does chorus number there, if num equals zero, 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 or num is less than six, throw an exception. But if I pass in one, two, or five, which this code will never happen, 
because you checked right here mm -hmm. if it was less than or equal to six. And then if I pass in more than six, it returns false. Interesting. Okay. Should all Joey's original, uh, original number, I guess. And then down here, we have more unreachable code that is returning not a number, which is interesting. I'm just mad that do the actual math in 9 plus 10 doesn't do the actual math. I mean, it's, that's very sad for me. Uh, yeah, no, so what I was expecting was it was going to be return 19 and then do the actual math was going to return 9 plus 10. Mm. thus returning the, the same value, but I wonder if our compiler pulls that out. Oh, interesting. I think uh, it I might. Thought, I think it did. Yeah, I think I think our compiler would actually simplify that down to be the same code. Um, <laughs> but anyway, all right, cool. So um, yeah, I think you're going to have a lot of users for this extension, especially people who are from Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh area, or who are making Pittsburgh-based games. Um, yeah. So uh, keep keep at it. All right, and that's it for today, folks. We'll be back on Wednesday. I will hopefully have some more pep in my step, but who knows? Um, now I'm going to go be in a dark room for a few hours. Ooh. I'm Richard Archer on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joey at J Wonder on the Make Code Forum. I'm Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. Soren says nothing has anything to do with Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah? There's nothing to do with Pixar in here? Is the Monaco <laughs> Hale incline open? Come on.